Ladies and gentlemen, I got my man Fatty Shara right here. My man that I met at Lifetime Gym in the Iron Paradise. And I've seen Fatty just do his thing. I was walking through the swimming pool and I had my 10X hat on. Grant Cardone, big shout out. And Fatty's like, what do you know about Grant Cardone? I told him a little bit I know and you just shared with me so much of what you're doing. So our paths were kind of in line. We've built a relationship since then, but all the way from business, uh, friendship, um, family, entrepreneurship, overcoming challenges. We've been able to kind of go back and forth on that and use each other as iron sharpens iron. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So, but here's how I'm going to kick off the show. You ready for this? Because I get asked man. this question ready. all the time and I'm excited to ask someone else this question. And this oh, yeah. is the question, my man. Man, man where, where are you from? So I was born in the city of Nazareth, okay. Holy Land, otherwise known as Israel. So I have an Israeli passport. I'm an Israeli citizen. And um, came to the U.S. at age 19. 19. Now, what, what motivated you to come up with? come up with your family or tell me about that? I came as age 19, single, and uh, come from a family with uh, humble means, both teachers, came for the pursuit of a better life through education. So I came to Oral Roberts University and I got a couple degrees from there in psychology. That was the motivation. Wow. Yeah. So you came you came at that age and you went straight to OU. What was that transition like coming from, you know, the Holy Land essentially to OU, which is kind of Holy Land too, but not like the Holy Land you came from. What was, how was that transition, man? It was really, really hard. It's probably one of the hardest things I've, I've went through. So I've, I've um, left my hometown and uh, my, my family, I mean, that's my parents, grandparents, uncles, cousins, and everybody. A lot of trust there, a lot of stability, a lot of confidence, and left all that, risked all that for the idea and for the belief that I'm going to create a better life, a better vision in the United States of America at age 19. So it was really scary. I remember when my parents, my grandparents, everybody, like last night before going to the airport, gathering our house, and I look around and the house was crowded mm. and people were crying and people were sad because I'm saying goodbye. The emotions were so overwhelming, Chris. Like I couldn't hold it. I had to go and actually like throw up. Oh, wow. I mean, that's how intense the family community that I come from, my background, where we come from. Yeah. So leaving all that behind and coming in here as an individual and risking everything, risking that, you know, you. You, you know, there's a chance of failure. I mean, a new language, how I'm gonna come up with the money to pay for, for my tuition, on and on and on and on. And once I came, I remember the first night, it was in January, 1994, a cold night. It was like January 3rd. They picked me up from the airport. They dropped me off on campus. There were no students yet. And I spent the first night, no bed sheets, no comforters, no nothing. That's when it set in. That, oh my God, that's a big risk. Like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, this is really scary. Wow. And I, I remember talking with my mom the next day and she told me on the phone, you know, you could still come back. Yeah, she gave like, you an out, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you've you're, you're just been there for one day. Like, And then in the back of my mind, I was like, man, come back. I mean, we've had like 100 people from my family gathering in my house saying goodbye to me. The whole town knows I've left my little town, El Abun, to come to the United States of America yeah. and come back. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Like, the, the, the sheer feeling of embarrassment and, like, shame and, like, guilt of me coming back just stopped me right there. So I had no option yeah. except to succeed. Wow. Like, literally. Like, when you, when you say, like, burning the ships. Burning the boats, man. Burning the boats. Come on, man. That's yeah. what it is. Wow. Wow. So you've, you've experienced risk versus reward from a very young age, and it doesn't sound like it was optional. Oh man, it's... Uh, you never look back. Look, I mean, now now looking back at, I never looked back, you're right. Yeah. But looking back at taking risks, every time that I think of right now, and in my life that I took risk, it always ended up putting me in a better position, whether it's mentally, whether it's like my the quality of my life, yeah. financially, just took me to the next level. It's like, yeah. it's that risk of, of, of allowing myself to be uncomfortable. Yeah. It's that love-hate relationship with like, well, I'm doing well, you're doing well, the business is going well, things are going according to plan, and then you get comfortable, right? But there's that feeling in your heart and the back of your head, there's more to life, there's more yeah. to me, there's more to this like experience, this planet. 
So and, he, and you really don't know exactly what it is. Yeah. And then to go to that, which is unknown, and that's why by definition is scary because it's unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And are you willing to risk what you have? Are you willing to risk the familiar for the unfamiliar? Yeah. Are you willing to risk what's certain for the uncertain? Are you willing to risk what's stable for the unpredictable? Yeah. And that's where like that equation of success and energy and vitality and faith and trust is is on the other side. Yeah. So so what was the goal for you? So for example, I came over here to play collegiate basketball, started in high school and I'll share here in a little bit, but I'm curious, what was the goal for you? Was it just to come out here and experience ORU, get an education? I mean, what was the what was the what was you working towards? Was it to go back home after or So I come a family I come from a family, a big family in Israel that are all highly successful. They're highly successful within the educational professional system. So I'm talking about doctors, attorneys, all that kind of stuff. So that belief system was put on me at a very young age that there's no way for success in life to be somebody as far as status except through your education. So I came to ORU to study psychology. As a yeah. matter of fact, I came to ORU to study law. But then when I came to the U.S., I discovered you have to go do pre-law first. It's a then process. Then go into law school. I said, no, I'm just going to pick psychology. So... Then I studied psychology. I took a, you know, I finished a bachelor's degree in psychology, a master's degree in counseling psychology, and then I became licensed in the state of Oklahoma. And I practiced psychotherapy and counseling and clinical work for 17 years with people in, in in Oklahoma. Oh wow, man! So you came over with the passion to get educated and continue the saga of everything that your family had built before, right? Correct. Correct. Wow. Education. Education. Wow. wow. That was. Um, um, that, that, see, it's funny how similar our journeys are. You know, I came out here when I was 16 years old, but it was completely different to what you went through. My brother already came out here first to ORU, okay? He's out there. He gives me a call back. He said, Chris, for some reason, Americans like it when you play sports, and he gives you something called a scholarship. So my parents are middle class, and they scraped together the money they had because plane tickets back then, even today, Absolutely. it wasn't very cheap. Absolutely. So they scraped it together, and I had to make that decision, man. You know, I had a girlfriend at the time. Okay, I had friends, I had a life, I had a little younger brother, but my passion outweighed the man, the comf being comfortable. I was like, man, I gotta chase this, you know, because this may have been my only opportunity yeah. to get an education and get a degree. Yeah. If I was back home in England right now, I'd probably be working in a Nike store. What size, what size shoes are you, mate? That's what I'll be, that'll be my trial clothes question, know. you know? So, because I didn't get, I didn't, apply myself in England to get an education yeah. and that boat had gone, you know? So they put me on a flight, came out here, had two weeks to find a high school, found wow. a high school, which was Wright Christian Academy. That's where I gave my life to God, wow. at Wright Christian Academy. And I was like, I'm gonna take the first scholarship I got. So I just took the first scholarship I got. You know, these kids this day and wow. age, they get all these offers and everything. I had one offer, Fatty, one. Took it, signed on the dotted line, and that was four years. So wow. started college, was an OLU experience. It was Bacon, that's Bacon with an E. I think they've gone through bankruptcy multiple times. They don't pay their bill. I don't know. And after my first year, I was like, you know what? I was like, I can keep messing around and playing these games, yeah. but I've only got three more years to get an education. And after that, I'm getting deported back home if I don't have my education. Yep. I mean, that, that, that's the rule. So I started applying myself. I said, you know what? This, this work isn't that hard, man. <laughs> and I really started applying myself. Then I got my degree in business administration, minor in finance. And after that, was off to the, the, the hustle yeah. bus as one may say, but we both came over here as immigrants wanting something better, not just for ourselves, but to potentially build a legacy, which you've done. Tell me about your family. Uh, my family right now, obviously it has grown. So I have three boys and one girl. My oldest is 21 years old, pretty smart kid, Baylor, pre-med, wanting to be a brain surgeon, wow. really, really smart, hardworking, pretty athletic as well, uh, devout uh, believer. I have an 18 years old girl who's heading to OU. She's going to study international law and pre-law. Very smart girl. And then two little ones, a 10 years old, John, and a 12 years old, Julian, also. And they're young entrepreneurs, man. They're, they're the two little ones, they're going to be they're in young. Business. I can I tell. Mean, all my kids are trained into how to think in a healthy and intelligent way about money, business, and um, like the materialistic world. Yeah. That would be beneficial to their, to their soul and to their mind versus just being slaves to the materialistic world and yeah. just building a career. Yeah. So again, education, man, has always been important for me. And, it, and education takes different forms. So I'm not just talking about formal education, college degrees, 
I, I was thinking about it today and in the last few days is how much money if I had to put a figure on self-development that I've actually paid out of my pocket yeah. over the years. And the closest thing I came to is about $800,000 wow. I spent on my individual, on my personality, on my self over the years all across the U.S., including overseas, to shape, develop, sharpen my brain and uh, create a, a broader sense of how to execute business, how to build a business, how to find the right people, how to find the right opportunities in the first place. And, um, you know, people, you know, when I travel or whatever, people talk about success all the time. They talk about wealth all the time. Yeah. They talk about money all the time. And, 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 you know, when people ask me, I just came from a conference. I was surrounded by, you know, like five, six younger guys, like in their 30s. And they were asking me, like, what, what causes success? What made you successful? And to be honest with you, it's that obsession, like, it's that addiction. It's that like insanity towards complete commitment of improving yourself yeah. and willing to do whatever it takes and the risks along the way to expand your mind, to control your thinking and to increase your your intelligence along the way. And yeah. when I say intelligence, I'm talking about like your emotional intelligence. I'm talking about your relationship with the universe, with God, with grace your relationship with human beings. Yeah. Just how to connect better with human beings and how to help somebody trust you better. So all of that has helped me a lot tremendously, directly or indirectly, in becoming successful with, in business and increasing my net worth financially. Yeah. So let me ask yourself, you, you said that you've invested $800,000 into yourself. What, do you, what, what type of ROI, return of investment, do you feel like that's yielded for you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, as far as the, the, the ROI, so... You can measure it financially, and you can measure it as far as your own vitality and the energy that you exhibit, that you bring to the marketplace. To be honest with you, not just the marketplace, even when you bring home after work, what kind of what kind of energy, what kind of what kind of vitality you have around your kids, around your wife, around your spouse, around your friends, yeah. around anybody. So, my the ROI on the self development, working on myself and learning constantly. Is, uh, is is immeasurable yeah. it's like it's like infinite it's 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 thousands of percents yeah but there are also ways that you can measure it that are quantifiable which is financial uh, business wise you can measure it through your health how healthy you are as a human being yeah how many push-ups you can do how many yeah. pull-ups you can do yeah we, we, we'll What's talk your... about that before the show won't we <laughs> yeah. man fatty essentially fatty challenged me to push-ups some reason the conversation this is why you're a great um speaker and communicator so and then the conversation changed to me doing 70 and him doing none <laughs> so I, I, so i was still trying to figure that one out i wasn't great at algebra coming yeah. up in the game so <laughs> maybe i won't figure it out but then i asked you how many you can do you said 60 you asked me to do 70 so i'm still rack, racking up that that 10 uh deficit there but 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 that that that's why they call you the boss that's why you're wearing the boss shirt right there brother you know speaking of wearing the boss shirt yeah. i mean what are you a boss of how many companies or businesses do you have or have you owned uh, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I don't, I don't really subscribe to the to the boss in business that way. I'm, I, I do my best every day to be the boss of my own thinking. Before I leave my home, before I even get out of bed, before I even say good morning to my wife and to my kids, I, I really like trick my mind and I focus on one little thing. So I start the day every single day the same way. You talk yeah. about consistency, yeah. and consistency leads to trust, and trust leads to increased energy, and yeah. it leads to better decisions, and then things start happening yeah. effortlessly in life versus always the need to rush and push and force your way to create results. Yeah. I, I don't buy that system anymore. I've done that. I've been there. I've evolved. So um, I'm the boss of my own thinking. I'm the boss of my own mind. I'm the boss of my own emotions. I'm the boss of my own body, but ultimately my bigger boss is is, is my God. Yeah. That's who I I uh, I'm responsible to, or that I have to answer to. Yes. And that relationship, for me, it's constant. Mm. That's what keeps me on track. That's what keeps my mind sharp. That's what helps me stay focused. Versus most people that I interact with during the day, everywhere I go, they suffer from distractibility. Yeah. 
and you see it with kids, you know, ADHD. Well, if your kid is ADHD, he probably or she probably picked it up from somebody, you know, at home. So how do you fight distraction, man? How yeah. do you fight distraction? No, 100%. How, do, how, do, how do you become more focused in life and business to produce yeah. the results yeah. that you want to produce? Well, and, and it's like what you said, it's staying consistent, but it's also being disciplined. And that's something that yeah. we were talking about yeah. before we started doing She said, Chris, hey, I've been asked multiple times about trust, you know? So how do you feel like being consistent and disciplined and having your ritual? How do you feel like that's built trust, not just in yourself, but those around you? Absolutely, man. So, so look, it doesn't take a genius or a rocket scientist to know that if a person doesn't trust other human beings, most likely that person doesn't trust himself. Yeah. Okay, so it starts from within yourself. Now, what, what do I mean by that? And, and I'm sharing this with you because I want you to exercise that muscle of trust and to reap the benefits of that. And it doesn't matter what age you are, you still have hope and you still have the ability to do that because God and the universe has given you one of the greatest tools, which is your brain and your mind. So trust is something that you have to be conscious of it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's something that you have to think about and you have to commit to and you have to intentionally exercise with people. So for me, the more that I trust myself and the way I trust myself is if I say, Fatty, I'm going to wake up today and I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work up for one hour. I'm going to do it no matter what. Every time I do that, my trust score increases. My trust consciousness increases. That's one example. Another example, every time I say to myself, I'm going to read today. Every day I must read and I must read a specific book for a specific period of time. When I do that, my trust increases and it goes up. And it increases mentally. So I start having trust towards my mental ability, my mental capacity. So when I'm talking to people, I don't get the thought, well, maybe I'm not smart. Well, maybe I'm not intelligent. Well, maybe I'm not educated enough because that's already been won daily through my reading and through exercising my mind privately. That's the same thing physically. If I'm exercising physically when nobody's watching me and I show up to the marketplace, I show up to a business deal, guess what? I feel that energy. I feel that strength within me um, it's the same thing spiritually right so I before I even step before get out of bed before I put my feet on the ground I say a prayer under my breath in the morning when I'm laying in bed to God basically to the effect thank you for giving me another chance for another day and bringing my soul back into my body thank you for your kindness and I start that way. And the reason I start that way, because I know it's all about grace, all blessings, all trust, all results come from the source of all sources, from the divine providence. And for me, the more I go on that path, and, and I'll be honest, because I know that gets people's attention, the higher my net worth is becoming. Like I'm, I'm making some moves that there's no way I would have made those moves in the, in the physical, natural world on my own. And I look around and I see people struggling with making simple little decisions. They're indecisive. And when you're indecisive, uh, it's, it's poverty. It's poverty of the mind and it's fear-based. Therefore, you're indecisive. And indecisive is another manifestation of distrust. That means you have fear towards something within yourself, towards the world. And therefore, you're going super slow, super cautious. You're always on the lookout to see what's wrong, what's missing, what's deficient. All that is a sign that you are lacking trust in the source of all sources. So my encouragement to you is once you fix that, and anybody can fix it by you focusing on it and by you saying, okay, I want to have more trust towards myself, towards God, towards life, towards people. Just by saying that, that's 50% of the battle. And then you start daily mentally exercising that ability and that focus. And you would notice your trust start going up. And as your trust goes up, those people will start showing up in your life. Decisions become easier as you move forward. Opportunities show up easier. Then your perspective changes. So now you're aware that things don't have to be suffering and pushing and rushing. And oh my God, because that's all survival mode. Survival mode is fear. It's fear because it's coming from, from scarcity. The opposite is trust, abundance. I will succeed. I will expand. I am blessed. I will bless people. Things come to me effortlessly. Things come to me easy. And if you truly believe that and you exercise that, I mean, business is just another manifestation. Of that for thing, sure, man. for sure. And, and I feel like I agree with you. From a mental standpoint, 
you got to believe in yourself, right? Um, I read something the other day where it just basically said that the things that you tell yourself will come to fruition, but that can be positive and that can be negative too. For example, getting in shape. You know, I'm at the gym, I'm busting my tail. Two weeks later, I step on the scale and guess what? It hasn't moved. Dang, Chris, you're a loser. You haven't lost weight. You're not doing what you need to do. You're never going to lose weight. Guess what? I don't care how hard you work out after that. You're not going to lose weight because that's what you're telling yourself. Absolutely. Now, if you flip that script, you flip that. It sounds cliche, but it works is, okay, it's about to happen. You're making gains. You showed up today. You're going to make it happen. I'm telling you, just those me the mental positive vibes will help. However, in addition to that, you can tell yourself all the good things you want to in life and all the things you're going to do and you're going to accomplish. But if you don't take action on those things, if you don't back up what you say you're going to do, then you're going to be like a hamster wheel spinning and just 100%. spinning and just spinning and just spinning. 100%. So that's very important to keep in mind. But here's the fix. For yeah. That. Okay, this is what you described is a common, like, predictable... Very common and predictable. ...human problem all throughout human history, okay? History are made by those who are obviously making actions and results. Yeah. Therefore, they will be remembered. The rest who don't take actions, they are not going to be remembered all throughout history. So when you know, you know, Alexander the Great, you know that yeah. because he made a lot of actions and he went to places and he'd been engaged in all sorts of campaigns. That's why he was the great. So the fix to lack of action or indecisiveness, or actually let's put it this way, what is the cause of indecisiveness? Why do you think people don't take action? Fear. Fear, 100%. So yeah. fear dominates your inner castle and you as the king of your castle, you're not opening those big doors of your castle to go out there and expand your kingdom. You're worried, you're sitting in the castle trying to maintain, to preserve, to protect, so you're in a mode of defensiveness. Mm -hmm. Again, it's fear. So you're shrinking. You're shrinking without you even sometimes noticing. Because, you know, with the economy as it is growing, with inflation, with recession, things getting more expensive, if you're not growing, if your business is not expanding, you're dying, period. Yeah. And your money will lose its purchasing power daily. So people who are smart with money, people who have wealth consciousness, who operate from abundant mindset from consciousness from trust level they're always looking for ways to expand their money so what if people don't have a whole bunch of money or they're just getting started so what it what is what is the fix to that the fix to that is you have to work on controlling and limiting your fear there, there i mean there's no way around what do you think the what's the first step in that because i cannot tell somebody who doesn't have the money well here's how you become successful financially just, so you just buy like real estate just, that's yeah. not that's not here's that's two million dollars put it down payment on 10 million yeah i mean that's not <laughs> going to happen right so do you, do you know what i think is the best way to get over fear and you'll understand this so i saw a study the other day that 85 percent of the things that we worry about in the future never come to fruition i'm gonna say that again 85 percent of the things that we worry about don't even happen in other words we worry about stuff and wasting our time we don't take action. Absolutely. So the the number one thing to do, I believe, is just simply take time out of the equation. You don't want to pick up the phone and make that phone call. You don't want to give bad news to someone or whatever it may be. You don't want to get up and go to the gym. But if you just take time out of the equation and get it done, that wasn't as bad as what I thought it would be. I actually feel good for doing okay. that. And, you know? and, and I like your approach. I mean, you're very, like, technique-oriented. Like, here's how you do it. Especially in the gym, man. You see me get down okay. in the gym, mate. You can do it, and I'll yeah. tell you why you can do it, and I can do it, but the rest of humanity are not, and they're struggling, right? Okay. So would you agree with me that this information you just said, it's easily available everywhere? Oh, any, absolutely. On social media, and yet the average person knows that information, and yet they don't take action. Correct. Right? Yeah. So then we're back to the question is what's causing that deficiency? Which is fear. Which is fear. So how Correct. do you fix fear? And, and what kind of fear that person, because yeah, that person is afraid to take action, but what's holding him or her back? Yeah. What I'm suggesting, what I'm recommending, is if that person does not fix that like universal, global, like existential, deep-rooted relationship with this universe yeah. of, of, of what's the meaning of this life, what is God, what is provide, you know, what is divine providence, if you don't fix that, the foundation of it, yeah. you'll always be attacked by fear because the mind yeah. job is to protect you. Yeah. So it's going to always give you reasons and fears why not to do things. And that's not just the mind, that's the world also. Turn well, off the news, yeah. mate. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, the brain's job is to keep energy saved. 
So yeah. it doesn't want you to expend energy. So it doesn't want you to go out there and venture yeah. and get yourself killed. And that's like the reptilian brain, right? So, yeah. so it wants you to just preserve and preserve and preserve. So to override that fear, yeah. you have to have powerful beliefs. And beliefs are a choice. Yeah. I mean, people who believe I have all the power because God has given me all the power, that's a choice of belief. Yeah. Like, I don't have to prove it. All I can say is that, that me believing in that has benefited my life and the bottom line. Yeah. Or you could believe, like, there's no God and everything is a jungle and it's chaos. And see how that benefits your life. Would that yeah. increase your anxiety or not? So people need to be smart in picking the right beliefs. Yeah. Not yeah. all beliefs are equal. Yeah. See, everybody has opinion and they think, yeah, you know, I, you know, I believe in this, I believe in that. There are beliefs that will increase your productivity. It will increase your state of mind at a higher level and there are beliefs that they will bring your state of mind down and that's fear fear makes you shrink it makes you go into into your body and you stop seeing opportunity and then you become very limited yeah yeah i remember um when i was in business it was my first year in business i tell this story quite often and um man just everything that could go wrong was going wrong so i lost I had five team members, four of them quit or left or moved on, whatever it is, and I had one more left. I had issues within the business going on. I had external issues and pressures going on of, you know, the haters and just all these different things. I had I had money issues, financial issues at the time. I bit off more than what I could chew, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I was struggling, and just everything happened at the same time. And I got in my car, and I was driving home, and for the first time in my life, I experienced things I had never experienced or thought I was about to experience uh, anxiety depression um, anger oh, yeah. emotion it's so real. all these all these things started happening all at once and um, I stopped at a red light and I remember what red light it was and I stopped and I was like man I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a crossroad for the first time in my life okay and I and it was like it was like an angel showed up here and the devil showed up here and the devil spoke first said hey you know don't worry about it Chris just go ahead and just break down have a good cry and a big scream and enjoy the depression, sure. you know, it's fine. Give up. And then the angel was there like, you know, you need to suck it up, you know, like you're gonna be good, you need to push through. And basically the decision is yours. So I was like, I literally, it wasn't 5149, it was 5050. And all of a sudden the Bible verse came into my mind, if God is for us and who can be against us? Romans 831, right? That's just, it just, it just came there and it just, it was a no brainer from there. And I say, you know, I flicked the devil off my shoulder. I said, angel, I'm rolling with you. And then I went that way, you know? And so my question is, and what we're talking about right now is if you don't have that anchor and foundation in your life, what is going to hold you firm and Absolutely. push you through the storm, right? Because you, you look at an anchor on a boat Absolutely. during the storm. It doesn't hold the boat still. It still weighs side to side, but that buoy and that anchor keeps the boat there. If you don't have that anchor in your life and you don't have that foundation and that solid, or if your house is built on sand instead of rocks, you're getting pulled out to Absolutely. sea, mate. You're getting pulled out to sea. Absolutely. So what I hear, what I'm hearing you saying yep. is, bottom line, it doesn't make you if you make all the money, if you get all the deals, or where you came from, or how many businesses you own. When your back is against the wall, and the devil's trying to pull you down, who's go, who's gonna what? Who's gonna pull you into the light and keep you going? And that happens. That's natural. That, it happens. Of course, it occurrences does. Occurrences in life. And that, you that's put yourself that's in the business, devil's game plan, right? Absolutely. Kill, seek, destroy, lie. And that happens more Manipulate. often in business. That's than, his job, mate. Yeah, because when you, you know? go in business. You become an entrepreneur by definition you're taking a risk so the yeah. question are you equipped to handle that risk just like what yeah. you're saying so you better yeah. pay attention do you have the right belief system yeah like trust consciousness what does that mean trust consciousness means i believe that god is in control of things yeah i believe that god does exist i believe that god takes care of us see these are three beliefs right there that go into that trust consciousness and you repeat it and you live by it. So when yeah. you're actually dealing with those storms, that's your core, that's your center. You're not relying on human beings yeah. to rescue you. You're not relying on external circumstances yeah. to rescue you. You're relying yeah. on something internal that is older, ancient, that is the creator of all. Yeah, and it's not just when your back is against the wall, right? That's just not, that's not it, 100%. you know? I mean, if you if you understand, you know, we, we as believers and, and followers of God understand that we all fall short of the glory of God, right? So none of us, none of us are perfect, you know. So when you understand that and you know that, you don't have to be as hard on yourself. You can recognize what it is, where you went wrong. But okay, here's how I can be better. I'm not going to be perfect, 
but here's how I can be better, right? All right, we're going to take a quick break. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Fatty, entrepreneur, as one may say, good friend of mine. We're just here to spit some knowledge bombs, but more importantly, if this can help one person, Fatty, one person. One person it's worth everything. It was worth everything. It's so. worth it's worth $800,000 that I put into myself. To, to get absolutely, so. absolutely. We'll be right back with you. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, cognitive and uh, physical optimization, man, that's yeah. super important for you to succeed in business and make more money. 100%. I mean, man. If you don't have the, the, the energy, the stamina, hey, hey. I mean, how are you going to do business? I don't get it. You know? Man, that's true say, man. And, and, and I got a good analogy on that. So, you know, if, if you're in the, if you're in the safari, safari jungle, okay, and it's me and you, I know I'm going to live and you're probably going to die. You want to know why? Because all I got to do is outrun you. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's like, that's, I, I feel like that is a big correlation to life. Sometimes in life and in business. Business. In business Huge. specifically. Because life we don't know, right? Huge. In business, sometimes it's just hanging around. 100%. Sometimes it's just hanging around, man. It's an outlasting, not the competition. 100%. I don't like to compete. Not the competition. Sometimes it's just hanging around where there is a need for a prospect and you're the one that's available. Absolutely. And it's and it's, it's basically survival of the fittest. Yeah. In so many different ways. Yeah, yeah. So let's so, so let's so let's talk about that. We're just talking about that. We said we talk about health is wealth. We met in the gym, but you've definitely leveled up. How important is there a correlation between you taking care of yourself, being healthy, obviously physically and mentally? We, we spend a lot of time on the mental, which is great, and the way that you perform. And to me, performing is how many people can I help. You know, so Absolutely. what what does the correlation look like to you? Well, I mean, obviously, if, if you if you can help yourself, I feel you have earned the right with yourself and with the universe to go and actually help other people. That's what we call authentic human beings. Yeah. If you haven't been able to help yourself, and yet you're offering advice and recommendations to people, that's uh, that's fake. And those wannabes. Well, it's, it's not it's not authentic, is it? Yeah. I mean, whether it's in business. Whether it's in your health, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's you know advice about finance, I mean it can't it can't be that somebody's broke financially is going to give somebody who's worth one million dollar advice on how on, to on manage them, their yeah. money and yeah. to grow it. It's yeah. just so so that's very important right now in the age of social media and tons of information is to separate the real from the unreal. Yeah. In business and in wealth, real estate, finance, all of it. So. Like, I'll be honest, uh, for me, when I interact with people and I do business with them or I want to go in partnerships with them, I do evaluate their physical health. Yeah. So I look at them. Yes, sir. And that's a, an easy, quick conclusion right there because obviously the fitter you are. Would you do business with me? Absolutely, 100%. Man, I appreciate you, brother. That would automatically translate into having <laughs> more energy yeah. and yeah. stamina to keep up with the demands yeah. of the business. Yeah. Which means... When you're in business, you're gonna deal with stress, you're gonna deal with challenging situation, which means by definition that's gonna be taxing to the system. Yeah. So that's one. So you have to be physically healthy, meaning you know you're working out, you have a workout routine. Yeah. You're taking good care of yourself as far as the food, what you put into you yeah. know, in your mouth and the food that you put in your body. That's essential. Um, you have to take can, can I can I can I piggyback off that? Absolutely. Okay. Because I want people who are listening to this to understand. You may be thinking right now, you know, I'm way overweight or I, that I could never get in shape, you know? And if you're in that situation, we're not, we're not judging you, right? Because we've both been out of shape. I know I have, you know? We're not saying that you can't be successful. We're not saying we'd never go into business with you. But what we are saying is you have an opportunity right now. Right. you got an opportunity right now to double or triple down. Yard by yard is hard. Inch by inch is a cinch. Just like me and Fatty did. And a lot of people out there, you just have to start. Put a game plan in there. Absolutely. You just have to start. I mean, and it's basic, simplistic things. You can't outwork a bad diet. Absolutely. We're in the best country in the world. So Absolutely. start right there with your nutrition plan, Absolutely. right? And then you don't have to join a great gym. We just spoke about hard body. I love hard body. I can't wait to come to hard yeah. body. I work out at Lifetime, great gyms. We're talking about walking around the neighborhood yeah, simple, on a consistent basis. Simple, Get a plan in place. Simple things, you know. Execute the simplicity. So, and then Fatty will go into business with you, mate. Boom. So, 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 so to that person who's struggling with weight, I would say here, here's here's what you do. A simple. Little tell thing. him, Fatty. Tell him. That's coming from a heart surgeon, a friend of mine. So whatever food you're eating, continue eating it, but cut it in half. 
Mm, I like that. Okay, so let's 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 think of it again. So if you eat four uh, Snickers, then just eat two. If you're drinking five pops, you know, five Pepsi, drink two. Or yeah. Three. And if okay. that doesn't Easy work, enough. and if that doesn't work, spend the money. Find a professional who specializes in this area and just spend the money. Oh, Chris, I don't have the money. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, you can spend the money now or you can spend the money later on a ventilator in hospital or surgeries or paying co-pays and deductibles. Either way, you're going to spend the money. And that's what's sad and disappointing is when you see people who are at conferences who want to buy apartment complexes or they say, oh, I want to start a business and I look at them, I'm like, in my in my head, I'm thinking, you know, you need to pay attention to your it's health first before you actually go up in a business. So it's about priorities in life, you know, like first things first. You have to take care of your body so your body can take care of you. You yeah. have to take care of your, your mind. You have to take care of your spirit. I mean, people are worrying way too much about business and money. And then when you look at the marketplace, I would say most people are really losing, to be honest. I mean, look at the stats. 98% of all businesses, they go out of business within 10 years in the U.S. Yeah, I just I was on a podcast I mean, show earlier. They say eighty percent fell in the first year, eighty percent of those businesses that make it to the second year that's crazy. then fell. And then another thing about getting in shape, working out. Here, here, here's the easy thing. A lot of people think, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and starve myself for two, three days. That's not sustainable. Okay, again, yard by yard is hard. Inch by inch is a cinch. It's not the big decisions you make. It's the small decisions you make daily Simple. that end up giving the best turns of uh, best returns on investment cut your food in half whatever you're eating don't change no diet yet just yeah. start there go to the gym one time better off if you don't have a gym just go around the neighborhood one round there you go do it once a week if you accomplish these two things in one week yeah now, now you have a little thing to build on then go to yeah. the next week and yeah i don't want you to think long term because you will get overwhelmed you're like well i'm not in this good shape and i have to lose that much that will discourage you again you have to have trust Correct. Within yourself, trust in life that is what it's designed for you to succeed. But you have to make those decisions. God is for you. Life is for you. What's not working for you is your own decisions and your own belief systems that most likely you are unwilling to change and modify. If you change and modify those belief systems, then you will change and your life will change. Yeah. Yeah, and don't and go ahead and cut out pizza, pop, and ice cream while you're at it too. That'll <laughs> yeah. help. So, <laughs> all right, okay. excellent, man, Sounds excellent. Good. No, that's great. That's great. So, um, let me ask you this: someone that's wanting to get get started in business, what do you think the apart from fear? What do you think the number one issue is in someone just getting started? If they want to start their own business, if it be investment, if it be whatever it is, you know. Honestly, based on my journey, I would say find somebody like Chris or like me and uh, get their attention. And that's going to be the key is how you're going to get their attention if you really don't know them very well. So uh, all I can suggest to you, because I'm playing both roles here, is if you approach me or you approach Chris, be thinking about how can I add value to this person. If you come up to me and you just say to me what, everybody else says to me, uh, chances are I'm going to dismiss you because I'm just prepared to do that. And the reason I dismiss you because I also want to separate those who truly want the knowledge and those who just players. Yeah, I like that, man. I'm not going to dismiss you if you drive a car or you have an apartment or a house because I could probably say your insurance policy. Okay, so I can't do that. No, that's, you know? that's we're talking no, about that's, like, like no, if I'm you just, want that, to that, open your business. I'm being, I'm, I'm being silly. I'm being silly. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm also hearing you say too is look, come to me, but also come to me with potential options or maybe potential solutions, right? Don't come to me and ask me for a fish. You know, come to me with different variable ways on how we can go ahead and fish and get a multitude of fish. You know what I mean? Because you're, 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 you're the type of guy, and I think that's good. You're the type of guy that's not going to turn around and say, here's the answer. We spoke about that earlier. You know, you will, you will guide someone and say, hey, come back and let me know what you find out. And the thing about you too is you know that nine times out of 10 and this is life, they're not going to come back because yep. uh, a lot of people want the answer, right? Yep, absolutely. And, 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 and the crazy thing is some people would listen to what you say and say, well, he's obnoxious, he's tough or whatever. No, what he's doing is you are empowering someone to go and use their resources and you're empowering someone to learn 
and pick up knowledge, then they come back to you. Yeah. Now we can have the conversation, yeah. right? Because business is really tough and challenging. I mean, that's just like asking to go and be in, in the arena as a gladiator. So the chances are stacked against you. I mean, you're dealing with an economy that is so complex and it's so global and it's so sophisticated yeah. that the average person, I mean, it's not something that you, you know, this is something that I feel like doing because it's a hobby. So you better be prepared psychologically and you better have the right guidance. When you reach out to somebody who's in business, they're going to give you good advice and uh, they're going to give you good recommendations. That's that's part of it. Other part is you need to do your own homework. Yeah. You need to grab the right books. And when you consume information on social media, it's a choice between consuming entertainment and mindless stuff, or you could consume yeah. business-related uh, information. So yeah. there, there are a lot of channels and there are a lot of people who are really good guidance there. So, yeah, I'm going to give a specific example of what yeah. you're talking about, okay? Yeah. I have a lot of people sliding a DM saying, man, I, you know, I want to do what you do. I want to come work for you or whatever it may be. And usually I'll send, I'll send them to my HR person and nothing ever comes for it. Exactly. Then there's other people. This is what I really like. I love it when people show up on the doorstep with a resume and hand Absolutely. it off on my desk. When that happens, okay, so they went Absolutely. out their way. They put a resume together, number one, which, believe it or not, is half for people to do when yeah. they want a job. Yeah. Um, they, and then they came up here. They got out their comfort zone. They meet and greet some of the people in here. They left their resume. They're always going to yeah. call back. And then there's the third person. You know what the third person is? I want to do what you do. What I've done is I've taken time out the equation. I went and got licensed. Wow. Here's my resume and I have my PNC and my life and health right there. Can you help That's me? That's amazing. Boom right here. That's amazing. Boom right here. And you know what? That person is going to make on average, that, that person's probably going to make an extra $10,000 a year salary than the person that wants to come in and get licensed. You know, so what type of person are you? Right, Fatty? Yeah. Are you that yeah. person that just wants the answer and you're not going to apply it? Or are you that person that's really trying to grow? And be intentional 100%, 100%. and take the conversation deeper, right? It's it's all about growth mindset, man. Like, that's like, it, that's, man. Like, that's it. Say that again, please. Like growth mindset. Come on, man. Growth, growth mindset meaning there's no limits to my knowledge. There's no limits to my ability to make money. And I'm always constantly learning. So it's, uh, it's seeking experiences, seeking people, seeking environments that challenge me to grow. So at age 50, you know, I mean, I decided, okay, I'm just going to go fly to Dubai two weeks yeah tell us more about that okay because i spoke to you before you went to dubai yeah i mean we were talking about it and it was pretty disruptive uh experience you know telling my wife and you know kids i'm leaving my employees my businesses my responsibilities but i knew it's the right move because it's also adventurous it's also there's a, a component of unknown and something that is new and all that kind of stuff and that's how i've always learned is putting myself in environments whether it's in the u.s or outside to learn so I don't do too much planning for like, well, I'm just going to, I just go and put myself in the environment yeah. around people yeah. who are smarter than me or at the same level or they're doing different things. And I listen and I interact. And I did that to Dubai and I went there with expectation. I'm there to learn, to explore. And I went there with this curiosity of like, oh my God, it's going to be amazing. That's all I did. No expectation of anything. And then I explored things and then people showed up the right people with the right energy vibration, the right trust level showed up effortlessly. And I've learned a lot from them. The next thing, you know, I made two decisions on two real estate investments that increased my net worth by $1.3 million. Wow. Within, while I'm having the fun and the exploration and yeah. Dubai and the enjoyment. And I remember when I made that decision, standing on the beach towards one of the investment properties I remember me being conscious of how peaceful I felt inside because that was a sign for me I'm making the right move. Yeah. You had peace. You had the internal peace, peace right? And that's a sign usually. See, if, yeah. it's, if it's stressful and it's just, if it's anxious, if there's anxiety involved, hesitation, in it, and like anger and frustration, that's a sign whether it's in business or anything that, hey, maybe it's not for you. So this is me uh, having that evidence of my beliefs about trust manifested into a, bus a, a business decision. Yeah. Because God wants to really manifest results for you, but God or infinite intelligence by design cannot fake results. Yeah. He can't. That's why the true success is always going to reflect the quality of your thinking. Like you are the result of your own thoughts, period. If you ponder that, contemplate that, digest that for a while, that you 
whoever is listening right now, doesn't matter where you're from, what background, what culture, what religion, what anything, you literally, if you look yourself in the mirror, you are completely the result of your own thoughts. Scientifically proven too. And I tell you, and, it, and, and, it, and it's, it's immediately, it's real time. For example, I read in this book, you know, golf, for example, you play any golf? Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Well, you don't have to play golf to understand this, right? So you're on a tee box. Okay. You look down the fairway and most golf players, I know for me anyway, they're afraid of slicing it right. So a fade is left and a slice is to the right. Okay. They hit it, goes over and hopefully doesn't hit someone on the head. Right. So before you get on the tee box, if you're afraid of slicing it right, guess what you're going to be thinking? I'm probably going to slice it right. So what happens is you stand over the ball and automatically guess what happens to your body? It tenses up. Absolutely. Okay. So Absolutely. what happens when you tense up, it pulls the club off the floor just a little bit. So when you come through, you tense up. You don't have to be a golf player to understand this. Slice the ball and it goes to the right. 100%. Okay. Now, same thing for the other way. I don't want to hook this to the left. You're probably going to hook it to the left. But if you get on that tee box, my friend, that tee box of life, and you look down the fairway and you say, you know, no matter what, you got it. I'm hitting it straight down the fairway. Not it. only am I going to hit it. it down the fairway, I'm going to split the fairway. So if there is a straight Absolutely. line going down there, mate, Absolutely. I'm hitting it right on there, man. And guess what now? You're nice and relaxed. Amen. You're nice and, nice and poised. Amen. That's you real, hit man. it and the people behind you are like, man, that was a good hit. And I was like, swung, didn't I? You, see, you know what I mean? And that's, and that's what really bothers me at times is it's, it's a choice. Like, like it's thinking, a choice, a thinking, decision, mate. Thinking like when you do something new. Last camera action as you walk through the door, like, fatty. Like, isn't it amazing? Like you do something new and the first thought, and this is you doing it. This is you doing it to yeah. yourself. You say, yeah. I'm going to fail. Like, ponder that for a second. How come somebody else will do the same exact thing and the first thought in their mind is like, I'm going to succeed. Yeah. It's a choice. Like, what I want to emphasize the most it is a choice. Like your belief is a choice. Same thing for shooting a free throw at basketball. You get on the free throw line, the crowd's going crazy. You see your teammates on the right and the left. You see the official. He gives you the ball. And if you say before you shoot that free throw, man, I hope I don't miss oh, this. Man. man, more than likely you're going to miss it. But if you get up there and be like, not only am I going to make this free throw, but I am going to go ahead and swish it through the net, hindsight's twenty twenty. I wish I had this mindset back in college, right? So you may be listening to this, you may be still playing basketball, whatever it is, so this can help you. The but, this, but this is life. Part this is thinking. life. This is life. I remember I used to ride in the car with my beautiful wife and uh, she she would come to a stop and then she would look in the rear view mirror like, please don't hit me, please don't hit me, please don't hit me. You know, just having that fear, right? Well, there's so many different things that can happen. You could roll into the car in front of you thinking about that, you know? And it all goes back also to the Lamb of God, man. If you've got that protection, you don't have to worry about that. You can have good thought process, man. Because you know, if God is for us, who can be against us? I will succeed. And you know what? There's no L's. There's no losing in life, man. There's well, learning. You know what I mean? Th that's biblical and all holy text and sacred text. Praise I mean, the know, Lord. In, in Yiddish, there's a saying, which is kind of like... It's, it's, now, where's Yiddish at? For the people listening, don't know where Yiddish so, is at, man. So Yiddish is like a combination of uh, German with, with Hebrew. Oh, and, man, I love my like, German people. In, in One of my best friends at Jiu-Jitsu, he's German, man. And, 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 Jens. It, and this is a very, very important saying. It says, Tracht gut, wird sein gut. Which okay. means, think positive, and positive things will happen. That's a common thing between the religious, spiritual people in that community, Chassidut. Tracht gut, wird sein gut. Think good. Or positive and positive things will happen it's a it's a mental spiritual discipline if you cannot control your thinking you have not earned the right to control your body you have not earned the right to control the quality of your reality so before you start chasing cars and money and bank accounts because that's why you can't cheat it I mean you'll see people who succeed there temporarily and they end up losing it you know why yeah because the quality of their thinking has never reached the level to match their physical materialistic reality so they lose it yeah. So do your homework, control your thinking, spend time studying the right material, the right, and construct the right beliefs. Your beliefs is the software in the computer. Computer is the hardware. The computer, the hardware without the software is, is meaningless. It would not do anything without the apps and the programs on it. So the question, what kind of programs are you running in your mind? Are those programs making your calculations and processing power faster, more efficient? or slowing you down and is bugged down by all kind of viruses. Yeah. That's that's the, the crux of the whole equation there for success and people who want to go to the next level and all that kind of stuff. I'm just giving it to you right now. 
And um, of course, you could do classes and you could do courses. And sooner than later, I'm going to be doing an event here in Tulsa for business people. Probably 180 people will be involved in it for two days intensive on all these techniques. And we're going to be giving tools and providing tools. We'll have financial advisor. We'll have people who specialize wow. in all these things and experts. Two days intensive, 100 80 men in business, small business for one of I'm going to be there, Fatty. Entrepreneurs. I'm going to be there. I want you to be one of the guys who are going to be involved in it. Let me know, mate. Just Let me know. Love. Now, where is it? Now, when is this going to be? We're going to set it up here in Tulsa. So it will be one of the hotels here. And it will. we're, we're, we're building it right now. Okay. Okay. So it's and, in the process. Uh, we'll, then. Yeah. We'll, we'll We'd provide, love to be part of that, we'll mate. We'll provide the details as we go. So you have to engage in these kind of you know experiences. Yeah. I mean, I've done these kind of things all my life. I mean, that's yeah. how I've learned. Yeah. You know? So, and everybody's capable of doing it, man. Life yeah. is so good and so abundant. Everybody has the opportunity to succeed yeah. and grow and enjoy life and yeah. have joy. Because what's yeah. the point to do all this and not have joy and I think, vitality and energy? You know? I think the great thing about it is God has always given us uh, the power of choice. God is good. Man. You know, he, he has given us the power of choice. And so I ask people who are listening in out there, are you making the right decisions today to help your future? And I think a lot of that can come down to what you've been talking about this whole time is you're the average of the five people you hang out with, who you decide to hang around yeah. and learn off the decisions you make will mold your future. Do you agree? 100%. And, and I would say this, because I know one person probably listening, it would be important. Reach out to people who you think they're successful. Yeah. People who are successful, they really want to help. They are generous. I mean, I'm, I'm even willing to help out some people. If you reach out to me on my social outlets, and you're serious. And what is your social outlets? You're a, you're a young guy. I mean, you reach out to me. I'm willing to counsel you, to give you consultation, you know, for four weeks. Is it, fat, is it just Fatty Sauer? For free. How can people find you? Fatty Sauer. Uh, Fatty Sauer, I think, on Facebook. Yeah. So if you look Fatty Sauer on Facebook, you're going to find me. So that's F-A-D-D-Y? F-A-D-Y. Sorry, F-A-D-Y. S R. O U R, and it's all on Facebook. And Facebook is connected to Instagram. It's connected with the rest of my pages, yeah. with my brand, Wealthy Minds. And I'm willing to help four or five. That is out there putting some some great com um, content right there. So like, I just want to make sure I, I hear you correctly. You're willing to take four or five young up and coming local, local, local. Yeah, here in, in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, I, Oklahoma, yeah, right here. Yeah. However, they got to take the first step by reaching out. Correct. They have, they have to reach out, man. Okay, that's that's generous of you, man. Yes. That's that's called paying it forward, right paying there. You it know, forward. absolutely. That's excellent, man. Absolutely. Wonderful. So, what else, man? What 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 else? That's an hour twenty, right there. That's impressive. Yeah. We... Usually, I go twenty five <laughs> thirty minutes, man. We doing it, bro. We doing it. We doing oh, it. We doing that's, it. That's good. We doing it. That's good. Um, man, look, what's got? Look, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. As one may say, I feel like you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Fat is always a um, always a pleasure. To connect with you and, and again the whole reason why we want to do this is number one help people overcome security in the marketplace yeah, if sure. one extra person can come across this content and benefit from it it's great um uh, but num number two is look we're all just small business owners it's hard to be a small business owner here especially in oklahoma so if you're out there and you need to help overcome obscurity in the marketplace go ahead and slide in our dms let us know and we'll get you with our hr department and get you on the appointment and we'll go ahead and help you we don't charge anything for this free.com as one may say because we believe in reciprocity and paying Absolutely. it forward ladies and gentlemen this is my guy fatty right here reach out to him he's That's dropped it. the information we'll go ahead and put it in the comments i'm chris mathur until next time take care of yourself and each other Cheers. peace Ciao.